Hello everyone, been a while since I've done a map review, so I'm going to do that now for Bagel, because I realize I haven't done any Koth yet. So, um, yeah, let's just get started with the rollout. Um, since there isn't really a, you know, coast-to-coast -coast approach on Koth versus 5CP, it's easy to go through all the points. Um, I'll just try and be thorough and talk about uh, different game states and positionings and whatnot. Uh, overall, and then of course finish off with some trap spots. So let's get started with the rollout. Very simple. Uh, it is a Koth rollout, so it only matters so much. But I find that uh, jumping off of this wall, hitting a ramp slide into lobby, and then just using an extra sticky ramps are kind of messed up in the 64-bit. Unfortunately, we need a ramp bug plug-in. Just something like that. Grab your pack, you can start charging. Uh, that first sticky, you can be shooting toward their demo. You can even be, like, potentially shooting multiple sticks there to prevent their med from crossing over um, pleasantly. Uh, and sometimes I'm actually a fan of really charging that sticky, like, almost to full, and then shooting it there so that... Uh, and actually, I could probably flick that up a little bit more. Something like that, which will hit players actually exiting the uh, the door. I thought you could like land it inside. Well, I would probably have walked up by then. So something like that is what I would shoot. Oh, it's floating. But you could see how that would like detonate in the doorway. Hit everyone who's walking through. The timing usually works out with that kind of rollout and that kind of charge to kind of hit everyone uh, that's leaving. Of course, their demo will already be through, but it's nice. Sometimes teams uh, roll out main recently, I've noticed. Um, that's fine, too. You could spam that out if you'd like. Um, that's the start, and then it is just Koth. So you're going to have a general position you want to be in with which you can contest the point, whether that be to cap it or to prevent it from being capped. Uh, the difference between the two is actually a little less pronounced on Bagel than some other maps because while you don't necessarily, like, you can be more defensively minded when it comes to defending the point, still finding aggressive avenues across it and um, finding times to be aggressive is a good disruption um, method, I guess, or strategy. Because, in my opinion, on Bagel, the best defense is sometimes a good offense, where um, it can be difficult to deal with the other team's aggression if you aren't counter-aggressing in some way on your own. But, whatever. One thing that I do... Well, you're going to be playing the point, basically. There's two houses. Uh, you are... Jeez. <laughs> There's some people. Some very loud engines outside. Um... You're going to be playing the point. You can shoot into the houses and help those out. But, uh, yeah, you're, the point is your concern. You do have to be mindful of what's going on in the houses. Because if, for example, left house is not in your control, which most of the time it will be, but it can get shoved. And your soldier doesn't want to die for it, so they're going to have to back up. Um, yeah, in those cases, you don't want to be, like, here, getting really aggressive on point if a soldier who just shoved house can easily just turn and kill you, right? Likewise, you know, you can be getting aggressive across the right side of point, but you have to be mindful of a soldier in-house. And also, it's very common for soldiers to get aggressive here and be spamming the point, so you don't want to be, like, super forward just eating all that damage. It's very easy to eat a lot of damage on Bagel as a demo. But, with that in mind, uh, as far as playing the point goes, there's something I want to illustrate here. So if I'm really pushed up close to the point, let's see my line of sight is kind of along this line. And let's say along this line, I have to kind of move because my sticky's fire from the right. So you can see, from where I'm standing here, this is my line of sight, this is what I can see on the point. If I take a few steps back, see how that opens up? See how suddenly I get to see stuff going on over there and over there? And if I walk over here, I get like a full vision of everything along this line. Just from standing a little further back, I get to see all of that. Um, this is an important concept on Bagel, which is the closer you are to the point, the less vision you have. 
uh, which matters a lot because vision is really important as a demo. And you definitely, um, if there's something that I see newer demos struggle with when it comes to their bagel positioning, it's that they're just like constantly playing this. Um, they're playing the point to, they're just permanently like very forwardly positioned and very aggressive where they will like default position sometimes even on the point um which is a very scary prospect it can work if you just nuke everything um but a much safer way to play the map is to kind of default stand on the slope by the grass where you can see everything and still like an uncharged sticky is going to cover everything you'd really want to oh that hit the point um it's still gonna do a lot as far as deny a capper um because a big deal is well we can talk about that in a moment um but you want to be able to see everything you want to be able to properly stop the other team from aggressing across a lane um and also when you can see things ironically enough um it actually enables your aggression better because when it comes to playing the point on bagel you definitely want to find those aggressive avenues with which you can maybe sink across just peek across um you don't have to full commit like over here but literally just standing here like these are uncharged stickies okay that one had a tiny bit of charge like these have a tiny bit of charge to hit concrete but everything here is very very shootable and these are all positions that an enemy like this is extremely passive positioning as far as contesting the point is concerned um and for that to be within uncharged sticky distance just by peeking across not even crossing that halfway point um means that you can get a lot done without having to commit too far across now as far as which lane to push um and peek across most of the time i think left is a decent default because your left house should be controlled by your team um and just pay attention to when your soldier gets shoved and you won't be able to safely peek that that doesn't mean that right is worthless and right can be nice for just like a little peek across i mean sometimes you know i'll just do like a little um maybe playing over here just spam some sticks across maybe peek with a pipe or two and you, you never know you could like sticky pipe something um and you're like hardly really committing to this it's just that and backing up something something simple right just those little pokes those prods those aggressive avenues uh if you find yourself dying doing this then you probably went at a poor time uh to be honest uh but yeah now something a little awkward as far as crossing bagel goes or getting aggressive on the point is that like a scout could just you know be kind of concealed and then suddenly in your face uh something to look out for but also their demo could be pushing the opposite side at the same time uh what to do there is a little awkward because you could be trapping off their exit um you could just be shooting their combo um or you could be trying to back up and then go fight that guy right i think they're all viable options i probably I default to trying to trap them off maybe too often when I should just be um, hitting the med for a lot or hitting the pocket scout for a lot, something like that. Uh, probably better. But it's something to consider. There's like decision, a decision to be made there. Um, high ground's really important to control. A uh, big spam position from the other team's roamer is going to be up here. That's going to be spamming you a lot. Um, so when a soldier or a scout is up there, it's a good idea to just spam that out similar to on top of the point now again similar to uh like a process mid or something even like snake water mid this could apply uh those mids where there's important high ground to control um but if you're too close it's harder to control because you can see how that sticky kind of overshoots um it's gonna debt really high up if i'm like too close to the point and in some cases just gonna miss it entirely versus if i'm a few steps back then suddenly that uh that sticky just perfectly lands on the height and detonates on top of it right um and that's going to do much more damage so be mindful of where you're positioned it's going to make high ground easier to control and again like this is a very nice uh default position to be in because you're passive enough to where spam is easy to see and avoid you get to see 
the other uh, demo turn across or something like that, try and get aggressive and you can meet that. Um, a scout peeking across the point is not going to be enticed to commit on you because you're very far away. Um, and it's quite nice as just sort of a default. You're also a little less vulnerable to this spam uh, from their soldier, although I suppose it is still possible to hit you. Um, that's going to be much less of a concern than if you were, let's say, pushed all the way up here. So having a default positioning when you're not actively trying to get aggressive across the point where you get to see more things, you have better vision, um, you are better equipped to deal with their aggression on point, and you're in a position where you're less likely to get spammed and, and more likely to stay healthy, right? Uh, you do have to look out for carpets, and carpets are a big thing on this map, because um, you can kind of just be blindly spamming over the point, and it's going to lay a bunch of sticks that are going to be a problem for the other team. Because if I am the other demo, then suddenly this is no longer a safe position for me to be in, because I would take like at least 100 damage from this. Um, so as a scout, obviously that's going to be you know a big job of the pocket scout, is just clearing those carpets um, so that you actually get to position where you want to be. But something you can do as well, and just spamming over the point um, can be nice. One uh, awkward thing about Bagel, I'll say, is the fact that, uh, you know, on every map there are spam lanes and uh, just spam that you can get with your arcing projectiles that you shoot over objects or walls or things in general. Um, and... A skill therein is kind of figuring out what, like, where your stickies are going, what's, you know, the good lineups and angles to shoot at in order to actually get effective spam. For example, uh, counter sacking into process mid. You can't see where the medic is positioned on point, but you kind of know approximately where they're at, so you can shoot over the rock with uh, pretty reliable uh, damage with stickies. Um, you know, once you get used to it. And Bagel has a lot of that because there's a lot of shooting over the point. There's a lot of sticky sinking over the point. Um, just things of that nature to keep in mind. Um, what else? What else? As far as dealing with the other team's aggression, to some degree, um, you can... If you can preempt it, so for example, if I start seeing some sticky fly over the point from the other team's demo... Um, then I have a decent idea they might be trying to cross forward. And obviously you don't want to stand where that's landing or anything. But just meeting them with a sticky, it's going to be hard for them to react. Because their vision on where that's coming from is going to be very short. To the point where they're going to be here when it's landing and taking 100 damage. And if you shoot two stickies, then that's 100. And that demo took like 180, 200 damage. That is very easy to clean up. Your scout on point can be just chipping that guy down if you have a soldier on slant that's an easy kill um although that demo probably wouldn't cross if your soldier was actively on slant but point being like a guy that you've dealt 200 damage to is usually easier to kill <laughs> um so yeah i do like kind of preempting the cross anticipating that and maybe meeting that with a couple stickies or something hoping to catch a uh a timing um Right. Ammo management is extremely important on Bagel. And you see this like tiny health or tiny ammo pack that you have to sustain off of. Did you know that this didn't even used to exist in old versions of Bagel? And, you know, back when I played Intermediate, I had to back all the way up here or go all the way over there to get ammo. It was horrible because you are nonstop shooting stickies, uh, just spamming over the point, shooting people on slant, trying to stop the other team from crossing. So there's a lot of reloading and a lot of picking up ammo. I'd say if you aren't like full on ammo, just take this, honestly. Um, unless you're like Pocket Scout extremely needs ammo, then you can leave it for them. But you want to stay on top of things and being proactive with your ammo consumption or ammo pack consumption is a good idea. Um, another in or important concept uh, here on Bagel is not just that you want to find times to reload when you're out of ammo, but also reload before you're out of ammo because it's quite nice to have like at least three stickies loaded if you, for example, need to take an impromptu Uber, if you you know need to stop the other team from crossing for a brief moment, just do enough damage so that they can't just fully commit across the point and like wipe you guys. Just having some ammo loaded is very nice to have. So rather than shoot down to zero, 
uh, like shoot down to you know three or four or something before reloading, um, unless you really need it in the moment. Okay. Um, with that in mind, let us talk. Um, let's talk. Ooh, man. Let's talk about Ubers. So when it comes time to take an Uber, um, Ahmed honestly even committed in front of this door might just be caught as long as you can bomb cleanly. A medic here is caught if you can bomb cleanly. Um, and a medic here probably less caught, but up here definitely caught. So think of these kinds of lines as lines that if you're in that kind of game state where you have add but don't have uber yet aka the other team gets to take a fight um before you get uber but forgets that you're getting uber and suddenly you have an uber and they're committed then you want to use your uber and kill them all so that it's that situation repeats itself you still have add um that exact same kind of scenario repeats only you've burned more time off your point um, so if their med is like further forward than these lines, then definitely think about taking that Uber and catching them. Just a simple, uh, communication here is very important. Of course, call that you might want to take an Uber or call like to look for it or something like that. As you're getting this, of course, your medics communication matters a lot here as well, because they know it's ad. And if they're at 80 or 90, they can be calling like, hey, look, if they're caught, we're about to get, it's still slight ad. And boom, as a demo, I know I can reload. I'm spotting where their beam is at. If I see them forward on any of those lines, then suddenly alarm bells are going off. Like, okay, they, they're looking caught at the moment. Um, let's get ready to use when we get. Call on me. And then I call a use and usually a side. Uh, I want to bomb across, so if I want to go left side point or right side, just so me and my pocket scout don't split up and like one of us dies. And then just crouch dead across. Very easy to catch meds in this doorway, um, because you can just shoot it and then they can't get out. Um, especially if they're like more forward, you can just completely trap them out and they're e very easy for you and your pocket scout to clean up. Anytime you kill a med in an Uber, uh, no other picks in that Uber matter, like at all. They only matter in so far as they keep your own med alive. Um, so if people are feeding into your med, then that's fine. But if you kill their med early and their demo is caught over here, it is not worth over overextending to kill that demo uh, and putting your med in more danger. It is more worth letting that demo live and leave if he's not interested in fighting you guys um, so as to end in a safe position. So anytime that I see that a med is caught and take the Uber and kill the med, immediately the comm is to back up and where the post is going to be. So in some cases you could theoretically look bunker in a house, not a terrible idea, but a little hard to accomplish unless like your Uber chased on the concrete, for example, this is a very intuitive bunker. Um, or if your uh, Uber chased really deep into the left, but even here is like a little awkward because unless your med is like all the way committed over here, then back door is actually a little hard to get to. Uh, so bunkering in the houses is a powerful option, but rare to be worthwhile. Um, a lot of the time, I just like to end on our side of the point, if at all possible. And then whatever feeders are feeding, uh, we can deal with that uh, at that point. Because, yeah, it's all about having that safe post after you kill the med. Um, as far as dealing with a four-man goes, a couple options. Um, so... It is a good idea to not just entirely give up the point because you don't want the other team who is at disad and wants to four man to see that you're really like passively positioned and then say, hey, let's just try and get some cap time, try and get the point. And then you guys are too passive to do anything about it. Um, but on the flip side, you don't want to be so forward that you are a person that the four man can trade with. So it's all about towing that line. If they maybe start to cap, then you can be fighting that more. Usually meds will uh, kite four mans through main because from main you are very safe to leave um, just like you would be lower right or concrete. 
but um, it's usually a little better to like administer heals. It's easier to bow players and just heal players that are at least you know somewhat uh, able to fight the point. If they're trying to fight it, then by all means you can contest if you'd like. At that point, they might four man, so look out for that. Uh, but the number one thing, while it sucks to give the other team a trade um, in the four man and die, it's much it's it's preferable to your med getting forced or dying. Um, so I definitely like to make sure that he's trapped off in that type of situation if I'm not just playing with him in main. Um, but something to consider. Okay. Um, as far as like house shenanigans, I really don't like shove houses ever, with like maybe a couple exceptions. Um, maybe we can talk about that now. I well, as far as the house stuff goes, I think it's fine for like a demo to be pushing through left house, for example, uh, to spam point or something like that. Not a like horrible play, and it's not like the other team's gonna have like a standard setup to deal with it. Um, I just don't usually do it. it seems oftentimes unnecessary uh, as opposed to just playing the point but you know what have you uh, I suppose it would make your left side so if their demo was shoving right then it'd make this side of the map very easy to shove um, so maybe that's the counterplay but I don't know uh, let's talk overtime so overtime when the other team has point is like very awful <laughs> um, you know you're likely to lose if you need to be the one standing on the point so you don't instantly lose then you have to be that guy um, but yeah it's all about just trying to win that next fight in order to either get cap time get the point whatever as far as uh, playing overtime when you have the point that's a lot more comfortable and actually these are the times when I like to get house if I can so if for example um, we get like pushed back or something and they're starting to well I don't know. In those, in some timings, I do like shoving right house for an angle like this, or like left house, for example. Just for this high ground over point can be really nice. Um, so in some overtime positions, I might like to climb up and fight the point if I have the time. But of course, just having the point trapped off, as well as the height if you can afford it, because that's a place that players will like to land. Um, then that's nice. It obviously they need to stand on the point, otherwise they lose. So in times like these, you can kind of just play a position like this against these players that are extra. They have to get to the point, and you can just like kill them all. Um, it's quite nice. What else? What else? Um, let's talk. Jesus, man, that is so unnecessarily loud. Um, let us talk about the forward hold. So there's two different uh, things you can do for the forward hold. You can have your demo play right side and your soldiers play left, or you can have your demo play left side and your soldiers play right. This is usually a soldier on the main door concrete and a soldier, well, main door is probably the poor phrasing when the call out for this door is main. But uh, yeah, the standard setup is demo left and then soldiers right, um, which is okay, I think. Um, so let's look at the advantages and disadvantages. So this same logic applies to multiple different holds in the game where um, demo is better at holding a door than a soldier is. So you usually have demo hold the bigger door or the harder door to watch. Um, this can be the case on like gully wash, for example. Some demos will hold big door when they're holding second. Um, and while I generally agree Sometimes I think this logic is flawed because while, yes, a demo can kind of hold left, um, it is a, a team can deal with it versus right is like so much more difficult to deal with traps and everything. Like the smaller door, a demo has a super like lock grip on um, as opposed to one soldier. However, you don't have one soldier, you have two soldiers. And oftentimes, two soldiers are better at holding one of those bigger doors than one demo would be. Um, so there's something to be said for the soldiers left and demo right. However, I think the standard setup of demo left and soldiers right is totally fine. Um, it is more intuitive for like your heels and your scouts to play around as well, which is nice. Like Your meta can be just comfy on concrete, ready to tank this guy while still being able to like rotate 
or turn for heals left side. Um, and also you're like threatening to just take a soldier uber into them top right if it is add, which is a very powerful uh, plan if they're caught to it. But that unfortunately leaves you with some doors that are a little difficult to trap that uh, sometimes feel a little too easy to get through. Um, and yeah, we'll talk about specifically how to hold left when we talk about traps. Um, but one thing I am a fan of is if I have a timing, like if we kind of wipe the other team and I have the time to set up an aggressive trap, I much prefer doing it right side. And I will call to my soldiers that, yes, we're forward holding, but I'm starting off right. So you guys should go left. And then I like to get a trap like this up. Um, this is actually starting to be a little more expected from players. Um, so if you really have the time, then you could even like deep trap this, which will never get cleared until it starts getting used a lot. All of that sticky sticking out. Um, the trouble with this is you are very flankable. So you have to kind of be mindful of how you're using that versus this. You're just kind of flankable. And in, and in fact, you could just like trap this off to some degree if you'd like, even though that would, if you had this set up, of course, um, even though that would make it a little more uh, ah, those stickies are hard to see actually hold up and this probably doesn't clip why was that so hard to see i wonder if that's just a good trap honestly i would not see that huh might have to start using that whatever um but yeah that that early right side uh deep trap can be nice for that deep spot and then after it gets a kill or something or after there's some downtime maybe they're like rotating doors or something then i'll get on left and we can get into the, the proper forward okay um that is it for the forward hold um let's talk four mans i mean four mans very simple you're just bombing in um there's multiple different places you can do this from i usually like to bomb from kind of around a corner where it might be harder to see me um, you can bomb from the houses and do things like that. Of course, your main job is just to force the enemy medic. Um, and so all you're really looking for is kind of that. I charge a sticky as I'm bombing um, just so that it's a little bit faster firing uh, or faster projectile and a little bit more accurate as a result. And then that sticky's really like the number one priority for me when I'm four manning because there's four of us meaning that uh, if I can hit their med for a good sticky for 80 or 90 damage that in and of itself is oftentimes enough for them to force unless they like surf it really well um, and this is also a forward where I kind of like to keep using stickies honestly um, you can uh, it's situational I guess this is less bagel stuff and more just like bombing in in general like when do you switch uh to pipes which is a hard answer or a hard question um to answer this was a question i had like a year ago or something for habib and he didn't really have a, a strong answer either because some of it is just vibes um and a lot of it is just stuff that you would have known in hindsight like oh well if i knew i would have lived that long then i probably would have never switched to pipes and just like wipes them with stickies but whatever um so yeah you're, you're just looking to force the enemy medic. Calling where their med is at and spotting where their med is at really, is really important. As far as when to go for the four-man, um, you have some options. So as a default, what I do is at least wait for them to commit to the cap and start capping. Um, but in some cases, it is worth fighting the cap while your med is safe, of course, because you don't want them to take their uber and kill your medic. If they take their uber and kill all four players, hell, even five players except your medic, then it's fine. It, that is functionally no different than a successful four-man in my eyes. So that is totally okay. Um, so it's not terrible to, you know, be fighting the point and have them use into you. Not bad whatsoever. Uh, what is bad, though, is trying to fight the point and then just dying, you know, kind of pathetically without doing too much. Maybe you got some damage on a scout that got healed off, like nothing too threatening to their team or taking so much damage that you can't really bomb realistically once they actually properly commit to the point so be mindful of how you're contesting the point if you choose to do so before the four man um but i do prefer to go for the four man at least you know when they're capping uh because a lot of the time their heals will be a little more committed 
But if you spot their heals are passive, um, then totally worth just shooting this um, solo scout on the point who doesn't have the support they need, or maybe the scout demo who don't have the heals that they, they would like. Um, what else? What else? I suppose you could four man um, before, like as they're getting through the doors, if that's kind of a situation you could. But even then, it's, it's probably not worth, honestly, now that I, I say it aloud. Because, excuse me, because in Koth, it's all about wasting time. So four manning earlier means that they just cap the point earlier. Um, so it might be worth, you know, if you're forward holding them, for example, with disad. Um, let's say you got forced and the other team lost some players doing so. And they left and you're able to forward. So they have an Uber and you guys don't, but you're forwarding. In a case like that, by all means, you should be forwarding. Make sure your heals are safe, of course, so they can't just pop through and catch you all or catch your medic. But you can draw that out, you know, back up from the forward, keep spamming, whatnot, and just draw that out. Maybe win another 15 seconds or something, which 100% adds up if that same play happens multiple times. Um, yeah, the time really, really matters in cough. Um, so yeah, that's four mans. Let's talk breaking forward holds. Uh, as a demo, there's very little for you to do, honestly. So if you're breaking top left, then you can be knocking Sticky's top left if they exist. You can be shooting a little bit further in to hit the soldier on the door. Uh, that's about it. Those are the main two things. Uh, is just spamming these guys out so that players can actually get through. You have to be mindful of the uh, main flank, but you just don't want to be the first one through. You want to make sure that your soldier and scout can absolutely make room for you and you just get through. Top left is not the most standard door to break through a uh, forward hold with. A lot of the time, teams will go lower right, um, which is fine. And when you go lower right, you, of course, have to look out for, like, deep traps if they exist. And sometimes they do. Um, yeah, you have to be mindful of those. But a lot of the time, you can contribute a lot just by knocking the other demo stickies off of the door by just air deading them in this doorway. And you can oftentimes see the demo like trapping the top or something, for example. And you can feel free to like use as much ammo as you want there to make it thorough because you can usually reload by the time things get going. Um, so yeah, usually you bomb a soldier through soldier bombs near the pack or something like that. Um, if you do have the opportunity to peek, then by all means spam their demo out, spam a scout on height, spam players trying to hit your soldier, spam a guy back on slant, that sticky miss, but um, yeah. Without committing through the door, I haven't commit through the door, I'm not in danger of dying to stickies. Um, I'm only in danger of the direct spam the demo might be shooting into the door, which I get to see. Then yeah, you can spam them out. Your scout can clear sticks, your soldier can clear sticks or whatever, and then you slowly but surely make your way through. Um, it is a little time sensitive. You do have to look out for the other team bombing in response, and that's something that uh, can happen when you're forward holding as well, is if they start to get through, then your soldiers can be bombing. And in fact, this is a sinkable door as well, for that matter, uh, so keep that in mind. Can be nice. Um, but yeah. Oh, another thing about when you're forward holding is I see some demos like hold way over here. I don't really like that at all. I much prefer holding kind of centrally with the beam because again, a forward hold is all about um, just wasting as much time as you can. And I don't like isolating myself for my heels over in back door because again, as I mentioned, like a soldier might bomb through. Let's say a soldier bombs through. If they, that's, not much of a uh, soldier bomb. But let's say they, they jump through. If I'm in backdoor, that's just a target to land on and try and trade with, uh, which I don't like at all. I like to be a little more, uh, a little harder to deal with. And also, this angle makes it easier to death stickies rather than um, kind of the lack of depth perception staring straight on, but whatever. Um, but that is the, you know, breaking the forward hold right side. In some cases, you might just want to exchange out of the forward, which you can do through main. If it's add, you might want to just take an Uber through main uh, if you're being forward held and try and catch the med or whatever. Just normal Uber things, like play the flip-flop. Um, so yeah, I don't know if there's anything else for me to talk about as far as bagel stuff. Yeah, I think uh, we can talk about traps. 
So you don't really have the opportunity to set up a lot of traps like during most of the fighting. Um, you know, the stairs can be a nice thing to carpet because of that kind of vision thing. These are actually falling short, but uh, because it's a slope surface, you're not going to see those stickies until you're very close. Um, so it can be a nice thing to carpet. Plus, it's just somewhere like someone might gravitate towards. Um, but just carpeting in general. Just if you have all your stickies loaded and they're not trying to do anything, like there's no players on height, there's no one trying to cross, there's no one like hittable in a house. It's like that. I mean, just shooting across. And you can even be like single deading these. If, uh, cause if a demo's there, then that's going to be hitting them. And spam is a really big deal in Bagel. Um, you can, the point cap so quickly, you can just straight up flip the point off of spamming their demo for like 100 damage and forcing them to heal uh, in some cases. Um, oh, another thing, maybe I, I kind of forgot to talk about the actual mechanics of trapping the point, uh, or playing the point. So the way Bagel gets played usually is that scouts are the ones in charge of the cap time and denying the cap time. So a scout will be capping the point, um, when you're trying to cap. And then another scout will be standing on the point blocking it when you're trying to cap. Um, so dealing with these scouts that are capping or blocking is one of the main ways to actually flip the point and you are uniquely equipped for that because you can just be shooting across and hitting that guy who's just standing here um, trying to cap and even like getting aggressive across potentially um, to to make that a problem um, so you know maybe be used to a scout kind of lingering in this area and that could be a hot spot to potentially shoot at and get damage on because you can absolutely just roll scouts. If you hit a scout... Because notice that like by the time that first sticky is deading, the second one's already being fired, meaning it's going to come out pretty quick. Um, so you can just kill scouts straight up um, and be doing like 140 damage to them in some cases. So yeah, definitely, definitely nice, <laughs> excuse me, to be able to just catch their pocket scout lacking and kill them or something or do so much damage they get cleaned up, do so much damage that they have to back up and then you guys get to cap. Um, all good and positive things. Okay, um, yeah, let's return to, uh, talking about traps. So, yeah, during the actual fighting, there's only so much you can do, um, but some basic stuff, I mean, you can get, like, a quick little guy up on slant can be nice, uh, if a soldier wants, I guess it would be better a little further back, um, but if a soldier wants to peek this, then you get to kill them. Um, what else? I mean, there's traps on point. You can trap both sides of the point. Usually people trap the generator and then the slant. Um, these are both fine. There's stuff that should get cleared every time, but not every trap that should get cleared every time gets cleared every time. And it's, you know, players are going to want to be gravitating towards these positions a lot of the time to peek across the point without being so committed forward. And yeah, I can get kills. Now, of course, if they're already, this is just like a quick and dirty something to set up. Um, if you don't have the time to forward and don't have the time to get forward traps up, uh, but want something up. Um, so at least like in the downtime, you get to be reloading stickies while having the value of some out. Um, stuff like that can be nice. Um, but if you're trying to set up a trap during the fighting when they're already in, when they're already near a point, they're just going to see it and it's not going to do anything. Um, you can trap the house as well, and this can be effective, honestly. Just uh, trapping up these doors that a soldier will want to peek and be near. Uh, left house a little less trappable, honestly, just from like an easy position, which is fine. Um, also, the um, balconies can be very trappable. So if, for example, I know that uh, left house just got shoved, they're probably distracted for a moment by like fighting my guy or making sure he gets out that they might not notice that being set up. And then when they come out balcony, which is a very common uh, way that a team who just busted uh, right house or just uh, shoved right house is going to progress. They won't always shove players to concrete and like immediately try and go for like a bomb and honestly like a feed. Um, it could get value, but if they know that right house has been shoved and that soldier's about to get his pack and bomb back in then just jumping 
haphazardly into the medic well like you probably took some spam damage you're probably not full hp and there is an entire combo that knows of your existence probably not the best plan uh in many cases so a lot of the time these two players usually the the roamer and flank scout who just uh shoved right house are gonna like come out to point maybe get a ton of spam and jump away and live um so it's like a, a very transient play uh but it can get a lot of value. You might be able to get picks. And point being, like, you have just stalled. You just disrupted whatever the other team was doing. They may have been, like, trying to plan something out, plan aggression on point, plan any number of things. And that immediately got halted for, you know, five, six, seven, sometimes even more seconds uh, because of that play. So it's still worth going for. But the point I'm getting to is that a lot of the time they will come out to balcony in a case like that. And having a trap there can be quite nice. As well as just spamming into left house is uh, not a terrible idea. Okay, uh, what else? What else? Uh, as far as traps are concerned. Let's go for some of the more forward stuff. Um, so, if you don't have time to really get a forward hold going on, but you do have time for a f for forward spam, then stuff like this can be quite nice. Um, I do like trapping this up as well, because players you know, sometimes like to gravitate towards this. And these get cleared a lot more than this does. Um, traps in main can be nice, so a trap like this, because a medic will like to gravitate towards main if they need to kite aggression, and something like this is not spottable from the right side. Uh, it is spottable from left and from a player coming main, but yeah. Um, also, if you expect them to maybe take a main uber, if you want that, or expect them to maybe exchange through main um, out of a forward hold or something like that, this trap will just drop their pocket scout because almost no team is going to be using as before they round that corner. Pretty much every team is going to be using after they round that corner before entering through that door. So something like that will drop that player. Or just any curious player that likes to peek because main is a nice... Like if you're trying to break a forward hold or something or just trying to get through, then main is just a nice door to check. Uh, because in some cases, maybe there's, uh, I mean, I've died to players pushing main because I've been forward holding here and I'm just right in front of the door. So main is a door players like to gravitate towards sometimes. So something like that can be nice. Um, this is nice as well. Again, these just rely heavily on perspective and where the other team is going. Uh, but something like this is going to be very nice at killing a demo or a medic or a pocket scout that walk through top left and want to rotate to their positions. But it's kind of useless if the other team comes bottom right. Likewise, something like this uh, can be quite nice if the other team's coming bottom right, but pretty useless if they're coming top left. So yeah, they they depend on, on the doors, uh, depend on perspective, but it can be nice. What else? What else? Um... I don't know. Let's talk about these forward hold traps, uh, left side. So, just trapping the door is always going to be good. Um, it's always going to present a problem for the other team. It's always going to slow their push. And if they don't respect it, then you can just debt on the first guy through and get that pick. And then the forward hold extends for basically the duration of their respawn um, before they attempt it again. That's totally fine. Plus, it's uh, nice and easy and can just... Yeah, stall them long enough to where it, it's easier to time sticky sync, stuff like that. Uh, and in some cases as well, I use like extra stickies just in the doorway, just carpeting this. Because as they clear these stickies, I get to shoot more. Same principle as like holding top right on last and even ubers on snake water. Where if you're playing against a sniper, you can just carpet that entire floor. And sure, they can clear your stickies, but as they get cleared, you just carpet more, and that sniper will never get a peek unless they want to take 100 damage. So something like this as well. Um, again, it also like gives you really good uh, indicator for when you might want to go for a sink or when they might try and get through. Um, but some sneakier stuff. So a trap like this, usually you have to use a lot of stickies uh, for it to be super valuable. But soldiers really like to bomb across this arc. Um, and that exists to kill the bomb, basically. It's too high up to really threaten players on the floor, um, as you can see. But maybe if they jumped, it would hit them. But that's not going to happen. Um, but the, the point of using that trap rather than something on the door is the reaction time is pretty difficult on the doorway itself. Because um, not... You know, soldiers aren't just going to waddle up to where you can see them and then just go for an obvious rocket jump. They're likely going to, you know, jump through blind 
um, or even speed shot through is a like real possibility. Um, so the fact that this is deeper in means you have more reaction time um, to debt, and it's also going to be closer to where their bomb is at. So that can be nice. Um, the classic is just trapping a pack, whether that be the health pack or the ammo pack. Um, that is the go-to for a lot of demos, and in lower divisions, it is super lethal. Uh, higher divisions, people tend to catch on. Um, I usually get picks with this trap when I, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, when they, like, get through the forward, and then maybe I, like, pipe some guy, and then expect him to go for the pack, and then, like, blind at it, for when I expect them to be on it. Um, uh, but... Sometimes soldiers will still just jump through and land on it, and you can just kill them immediately. Um, stuff like this is quite nice, because again, you know, players like to gravitate towards the pack, towards stuff like this, and maybe they're a little wary of that, but this might hit them, or a guy here. Um, this can work as well. That looks so horrible, actually. I've gotten kills with that. I don't really use it much anymore. Uh, the bush is a classic. Trap in the bush. Again, it's... Uh, Stuff that should get cleared, but doesn't always. I do like trapping kind of the back side of this box, or just this, like, perspective-based trap. Because, again, a player will gravitate towards that position, and that uh, targets it. What else? I have gotten some value actually trapping this hose um, as sort of an anti... Um, pack trap because people who expect the pack to be trapped might land further back or a scout walking up but worried about this is going to walk further back um, and that can absolutely get kills and I know it like looks so obvious here in no small part because there's a crit sticky but if you are getting through a forward hold and looking all the way over here um, then you are not looking at the important targets. This is not an area that people are likely going to be looking and like staring at. Um, yeah. Are there any other? There's some like deep traps you can go for. Um, stuff like this uh, can help if a team rolls out secret to right side. Um, I've seen Banny use this. I've tried using it as well. I, I don't know if it's that good. Honestly, that sticky, of course, is sticking out. Um, maybe it's not bad, actually. If someone just haphazardly walks over. Timing the death's going to be a little annoying, though, because, again, that, that perspective uh, makes it difficult. But, of course, just deep traps in general can be nice if you have the time to. Um, excuse me. Yeah, I don't know. When you're holding uh, top right as well, these are nice things to trap, as well as the door itself can be good. And a nice thing about, like, if, for example, you have a trap on top right doorway, and you were just doing a demo right side forward hold, if the other team busted left side, you can just back up right house and be walking or watching this the entire way back. So if their flank at any point got in, you can just kill them. Um, so stuff like that can be nice. Um, I think that might be all I have to talk about Bagel. If there's anything to focus on, just focus on that positioning on point. Focus on those, like, when you can and can't take those aggressive uh, pokes across the point to do a lot of damage and spam and whatnot. Because um, if you are good about playing the point and make it difficult for the other team, then you are going to have a good time on this map. But I think that's all from me. I'm sure there's a couple things I'm just um, forgetting, but what can you do? Hope you guys enjoyed. See you all later.